Okay, so last time we talked about the direct comparison test. <coughs> and that was the test where you find two positive sequences. Two positive sequence. One is the big sequence, one is the little sequence. Right? So then if they're both positive, if they're both positive and the big one converges, then the little one must also converge, right? It has no possibility. It can't get bigger. It's positive and can't get bigger than the big one, and the big one converges, so the little one has to converge. Okay, similarly, if you have two sequences that are positive, a big one and a little one, okay, and you consider the series, if the series of the, of the little one diverges, then the big one has to be even bigger, so it must also diverge, right? That's the direct comparison test. Okay, so that requires setting up inequalities, and, you know, in my experience, most students feel that to be unwieldy, okay? But also, in my experience, about 2 or 3% of students really like that, and if you're one of them, great, right? I was one of the students that always liked doing, using the direct comparison test because if you know how to use it, then the solution to your question can be very, very short. And that's what I was into, right? Not working very much. Okay, so <coughs> there was another test that we went over, the limit comparison test. So I'm going to remind you what it is now, and then we're going to do a few examples. Oh, wait a minute. Does that look good? No, that's two. That's two. Let's, let's fix that. <coughs> okay. So what? sometimes I have to re close this and reopen it, and it makes it look better. <coughs> There, that looks better to me. Okay, maybe I'm just, you know, seeing things. Fine. Okay, so the limit comparison test, which I'll just initialize as LCT. The limit comparison test is this. Given two positive sequences, AN and BN. Now, these two positive sequences, they don't have to be ordered, right? One of them doesn't have to be the big one, and one of them doesn't have to be the little one. Right? Sometimes A n can be bigger, sometimes B n can be bigger, whatever. Okay, so then if these three conditions, one, or maybe there's more than three, let's see. The limit as n goes to infinity of A n over B n is L. That is to say that the limit exists. Okay, and two. L is positive. Okay, and three, L is finite. Okay, so then what this what these three conditions together are telling you is that these two s positive sequences, A in and B in, they grow similarly. They grow similar similarly. That is to say that if you if you compute the limit of their ratio, you get some number, right? What if the limit was what if the limit was zero? That would be saying that B n grows a lot faster than A, right? That the sequence B grows a lot faster than A. So then they're not growing similarly. B B grows way faster. What if the limit is infinite? That would say that A grows way faster. A grows way faster. Okay. So what these three conditions are telling you together is that is that A and B, they, they grow at similar rates. Okay, so for those of you that are software or hardware electrical engineering people, okay, you, you have or will soon learn about something called complexity, right? So to say like, oh, quicksort is, is O in log N. Okay, that, that, this is very related to that argument. Okay, for those of you that aren't interested in any kind of programming, I uh, just forget about what I just said. Okay. <coughs> so the conclusion is then, then, the sum from n is 1 to infinity of a n and the sum from n is 1 to infinity of b n both converge or both diverge. Okay, which kind of makes sense, right? If you have two sequences and they grow similarly, then the corresponding series must 
have the same kind of behavior. They must both converge. They must both diverge. Does this say anything about what they converge to if they converge? No, it doesn't say anything. Okay, so then I demonstrated that this, this, that the limit comparison test was true last time. <coughs> so now let's do an example. So just like the direct comparison test, the limit comparison test will start out with me either saying, use the limit comparison test, <laughs> or I just give you a series, and you look at the series and you say, well, I don't know exactly what that series does, but it kind of looks like this other series okay, that I know what it does. And so then you use the limit comparison test, and then you say, ah, well, the series you gave me is like this other one. The conditions of the limit comparison test are true, and this other one converges. So the one that you gave me, what? Converges. Okay, good. So then let's have an example. <coughs> Okay, so for example, the sum from n is 1 to infinity of the square root of n in the numerator divided by n squared plus 1. Okay, so now let's pretend that we're a few weeks away from now, and I've just given you a series. Y you need to look at this and, and go through the the all of the categories. So first you ask yourself, what? What's the first thing you ask? Is it a geometric series? So is it? No, it is evidently not a geometric series. Can I use the nth term test for divergence? That is to say, what is the limit of the sequence part? What is, what's the limit of the sequence part? Zero. Why is it zero? Because the denominator is of degree 2, and the numerator is of degree what? Half, right? Degree 2 is greater than degree half, so the denominator is going to grow faster than the numerator, so the limit of the sequence part is 0. So what conclusion can be made with the nth term test for divergence? No conclusion. Okay, fine. Uh, the next one was the integral test. Okay, so then... Probably you could use the integral test. That is to say, if you made the, if you made the corresponding function, okay, then that function, from my just cursory glance, appears to be continuous and positive and decreasing. But now I ask you, does that look like something you could integrate? Not without difficulty, right? Not without some difficulty. <coughs> you probably have to do some kind of weird substitution. I don't know exactly how it would go. Okay, so then, we could use the direct comparison test, and using the direct comparison test would actually be really easy on this one, but I'll ignore that for a minute, <laughs> because we want to use the limit comparison test. Okay, so then let's say that, okay, we've, we've arrived, okay, maybe you don't like using the direct comparison test, we're going to use the limit comparison test. Okay, so you should announce to the grader, I am going to use the limit comparison test, because you do not want to be in the situation where the grader is looking at your response, okay, and they know that you have 10 different tests to choose from and they can't even figure out what test you're using. Okay, you don't want to be in that situation. Okay, so we're going to use the limit comparison test. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is we're going to look at this expression. Okay, this is the expression we need to deal with. And now, we're going to play a following, the following game. So in the numerator, what is the most significant term in the numerator? <laughs> the square root of n, right? The only term that's in the numerator. Okay, the square root of n. Okay, now what is the most significant term in the denominator? n squared, right? The 1 is, is insignificant, so I'm going to say over n squared. Okay, now I'm going to take this expression and I'm going to simplify it, right? This is, this is n to the one-half, right? And this is n squared. So then after simplifying this, this is 1 over n to the three-halves. Okay, so then starting with the initial sequence, the initial sequence, I sort of went through a, a sequence <laughs> of discarding terms that are, that are not, uh, not significant. 
Okay, and then now I have 1 over uh, n to the 3 halves. So we're going to compare the given series with this series now. The series n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 3 halves. So then now tell me about this series that I've just written down. Tell me about it. It's a p-series. It's a p-series. With p is what? Three halves. Okay, so then you should be able to tell me immediately whether or not it converges. So, so what? It converges, right? We're going to compare the given series with this series, which is a convergent p-series. Okay, now we haven't established it yet. We haven't established it yet. But assuming that, the, that we successfully go through the steps of the limit comparison test, and given that this is a convergent p-series, what is probably true about this one? This one will also converge. Okay, so does everybody see the way it kind of goes? Okay, so let's compute the limit. <coughs> Okay, so I'll now I want to think about it for just a minute. <coughs> so, like this, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n to the 3 halves divided by the square root of n over n squared plus 1. So now I have a question for you. You know, if you worked ahead of me and you wrote a diff, you you might have written it like with these in the opposite, right? Uh, the reciprocal of this is what I'm trying to say. You might have written this one in the numerator and that one in the denominator. Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter because according to the conditions of the limit comparison test, right? The limit has to exist and be finite and be positive. And if you have a sequence whose limit exists and is finite and is positive, then it's the reciprocal of that also exists is finite and is positive. Okay, now I chose this particular this particular one, right? This one in the numerator and this one in the denominator because I knew that algebraically this one will be slightly easier to deal with. Okay? That's the reason why I did that. Okay, now division by a fraction is same as multiplication by its reciprocal, so limit as n goes to infinity <coughs> 1 over n to the 3 halves multiplied by n squared plus 1 over n to the 1 half, like so. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. In the numerator, n squared plus 1. In the denominator, n to the 3 halves multiplied by n to the 1 half. So I have two things of the same base. So you add the exponents. 3 halves plus 1 halves is 4 halves, which is 2, so n squared. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n squared. So this is obviously equal to what? 1. Okay. So does the limit exist? Yes. Is it finite? Yes. Is it positive? Yes. Okay. So therefore, by the limit comparison test, the series from 1 to infinity of the square root of n over n squared plus 1 converges. Okay, we don't know what it converges to, <coughs> but we do know that it converges. Okay, so any question about this one? Yes? No, 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 no. You don't need to show that. <coughs> but, you know, unless, I mean, it's fine if, it's fine if you attempt a test and then you realize, ah, not going to work, and then you move on to another one. That's fine. Okay, but generally, if, when you do enough of these questions, you'll be able to say, no, not that one, not that one, not that one. I think that one's going to work, so I'll do that one. <coughs> yes? 
Yeah, okay, you want to see the direct comparison test? Okay, let's do it. Okay. <coughs> so, the direct comparison test. Okay, now, for the same reason, they're using the exact same reasoning as before. Okay, I think that this behaves like 1 over n to the 3 halves. which converges. Okay, so you have to be able to, you know, they're called comparison tests, so you have to, in a sense, be able to arrive at, oh, okay, the series you gave me behaves like this other one, and it converges. So, if I'm going to, if I'm going to use the direct comparison test, if I'm going to use the direct comparison test, then I need this one to be the little sequence. Okay, and I need to find a bigger sequence such that its series converges. Okay. <coughs> So, <laughs> you know, as it turns out, thi this, is, this one is sufficient, right? That one is enough because, because we can do the following. <coughs> okay, so start out with uh, what? So, zero is less than one. <laughs> That's a fact. Okay, and then I can add n squared, so n squared. Uh, plus n squared here. So then now n squared is less than n squared plus 1. <coughs> okay, so then now I can take reciprocals. I can take reciprocals. And then when you take reciprocals, the direction of the inequality changes. So 1 over n squared is greater than 1 over n squared plus 1. And now I can multiply both sides of the inequality by the square root of n. Okay, and I don't need to worry about the direction of the inequality because of what? Square root's positive. Okay, so the square root of n over n squared is greater than the square root of n over n squared plus 1. <coughs> okay, and both of these are positive. Okay, and this one is equal to 1 over n to the 3 halves. Okay, so then <coughs> the series from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 3 halves converges because it is a p series with p as 3 halves. And therefore, by the direct comparison test, the series from n is 1 to infinity of the square root of n over n squared plus 1 also converges. Any question about this one? So the limit comparison test and the direct comparison test are, you know, like, uh, I would say quite similar. It's just that in the mechanics of using the direct comparison test, you use a bunch of inequalities. And in the mechanics of the limit comparison test, you use limits. Other questions? <coughs> Other questions? Hmm, do I see any interesting ones here? Not really. <coughs> so the only thing about harmonic series is just what it is, right? So then it's, there is a harmonic series, and does it converge or does it diverge? It diverges. That's basically all there is to say at this point. Okay, but soon we're going to talk, as in probably in the next few minutes, <laughs> We're going to talk about something else called the alternating harmonic series and other things related to it. And then later we're going to talk about something called a power series and then we're going to realize that the alternating harmonic series is actually related to the log function, which doesn't seem, which, you know, seems pretty reasonable, right? Because the log function is the anti is the integral from 1 to x of 1 over x, blah, blah, blah. Okay, good. Other questions, comments?
<coughs> okay. So now we're in the next section, 9.5, which is called alternating series. Okay, <coughs> so best to start out with what is meant by the word alternating. So given a positive sequence, given a positive sequence, there are two alternating series corresponding to that positive sequence. The sum from n is 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus, uh, to the n, I'll say, uh, a n, and the sum from n is 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1, a n. These are alternating series. Okay, so then someone explain to me the usage of the word alternating here. Yeah, between negative and positive. Because because if you look <coughs> if you look right, the SIGNs of the terms in the series alternate between positive and negative. Okay, they're always alternating because the sequence part A N it's positive. Right? So this part is always positive. Okay, and this thing alternates its S I G N every term. So such a thing is called an alternating series. And these show up a humongous amount, right, I I everywhere in mathematics and physical sciences and things like this. <coughs> okay, so an example of like an alternating, uh, you know, something that's alternating is a ball bouncing, right? The direction of its velocity, the SIGN of its velocity is changing sign all the time. And so oscillatory thing, anything that's oscillating, you know, it, it's alternating in some way. Okay, great. Like electricity, right? The current that we use to run all these things, the current is alternating. <coughs> okay, so then now we have something called the alternating series test. A series is alternating if the SIGN of consecutive terms is switching between positive and negative. Ah, so then, yeah, just as a just as a remark, I'd like to say this: that this book, right, and, and most calculus courses like to like to hide negative one to the n, right, with the following: negative one to the n can be written as cosine of n pi. Maybe this is what you're referring to. Yeah, so then, you know, th these two expressions are the same, okay, for integer values of n. <coughs> okay, so the alternating series test. No, not that one. Alternating. series test. So this is another test, right? Just like we have so many other tests, here comes another one. <coughs> okay, so given an alternating series, the sum from n is 1 to infinity of, of negative 1 to the n a to the n, or negative 1 to the n plus 1 with a positive a n, if two conditions. <coughs> First, the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is, what do you suppose it has to be? What does the limit of the sequence have to be? This is information you already know. It has to be zero, 
right? So I'm setting up conditions for this to converge. So if the limit of the sequence part is zero, okay, and a n is monotone decreasing, so if the limit of the sequence part is zero and a n is monotone decreasing, which is to say, algebraically, you could say that a n plus one is less than or equal to a n, then <coughs> the series converges. So no, monotone is, is the non-strict one. So if you want it to be strict, you say strictly monotone decreasing. <coughs> OK, so if the limit of the sequence part, okay, if the limit of an is 0 and an is monotone decreasing, then the alternating series converges. OK, now before, before I actually show that this is true, I'd like to point out something that's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to show this is true on the next page, but I want to write down an example, two examples. So first, how about this? The sum from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n. What is this one called? The harmonic series. Does it converge? No, it diverges. OK, now how about this one? The sum from n is 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n multiplied by 1 over n. So what do you suppose this one is called? The alternating harmonic series. OK, good. The alternating harmonic series. OK. Do you suppose it converges or diverges? Well, let's have a quick look. <coughs> so in the alternating harmonic series and in the alternating harmonic series in the alternating series test, right, what is a n here? One over n, right? Just this part. Not the alternating part, just this part. So what is the limit of this? Zero. Is this monotone decreasing? Yeah. So does the alternating harmonic series converge? Sure does. <coughs> right, it converges. We will learn later that this particular alternating harmonic series will be able to tell what it actually converges to. And if memory serves, which it doesn't always, <laughs> but if it does this time, it converges to negative log of 2, which is log of 1 half. Okay, we'll show this in a few weeks, or lectures. I don't know exactly how far we are away from it. OK, so then the harmonic series, the harmonic series diverges, but the alternating, series, alternating harmonic series converges. OK, so then this is going to set up this sort of concept that we're going to deal with, which is to say, all right, all right, this series doesn't converge, the one you gave me. Now, how, how much can I play with it? And, all, and change it until it does converge. Right, so then now, to take this series, which doesn't converge, in a sense, all I had to do was change, half of, change the signs of half of the terms. Right, I changed the sign of every other term, converges. Ah, that's interesting. OK, so then that brings up another question. What if I give you a series which converges? Can you change the SIGNs of arbitrarily many of the terms in any way that you want? Will it still converge? Will it still converge to the same thing? Will it converge to something else? What if I give you a series and it converges, and then I say, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reorder all of the terms in some weird way. Like instead of adding them together in the order you gave me, I'm going to switch them all around and then add them together. Will it still converge? Will it converge to the same thing? So then this is, what, this is what we're starting to come to, right? How much can I play with this until it starts breaking, right? This is a, as opposed to the finite case, right? What if I give you finitely many numbers, like 43 numbers, OK? 
Okay, you add them together, you're going to get a number every time. Does it matter what order you add them together? No. You're still going to get a number, and it's always going to be the same number. And it doesn't matter what order you add them together in. How about, how about what if I give you a number, 43 numbers, and you add them together? Okay, you're always going to get a number. What if I start changing the SIGNs of some of them? Will that make it to where you don't get a number anymore? No, you're always going to get a number. You might get a different number, but you're always going to get a number no matter how you change the SIGNs. But when you have infinitely many numbers, things start getting weird, okay, when you try to add them all up and change the order you do things in. Okay. Now let's demonstrate that the alternating series test is true. Okay, so then how do we demonstrate every single, every single one of these tests? Every time we've done the, we've taken the exact same strategy. What's the strategy? <coughs> Okay, so then how about this? What, what does it mean for a series to converge? What does it mean, the mathematical definition? I'm looking for a word that starts with P and ends with partial. Par partial? <laughs> okay, okay, so I'll just say, all right, I, ga I gave you your chance, okay. The sequence of partial sums, right? The sequence of partial sums. So every time we want to show that a series converges and we're setting up a test, right, we construct the sequence of partial sums. Then we have a sequence. What is the next thing that we do with that sequence? We show that that sequence is two things. Bounded is one of them. Monotone. Okay, so we construct the sequence of partial sums. Demonstrate that the sequence of partial sums is bounded. Demonstrate that the sequence of partial sums is monotone. Okay, then, because of those two reasons, the sequence of partial sums must converge. Okay, and because the sequence of partial sums converges, that is the definition to say that the series converges. Okay, so do we remember all of this? Good. So, first... First... <coughs> Let's consider S2n. That is to say, the even terms. Of the sequence of partial sums. OK. <coughs> so that will mean that we're going to do this. S2n, well, that's equal to A1 minus a2 plus a3 minus a4 okay then plus dot 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 okay <coughs> now notice that the SIGN okay of the odd terms is what? positive okay wait a minute this is this is backwards okay so then <coughs> Let's change this to the alternating series test to make this plus one so, so that it's correct. Okay, it works just as well for the other thing. It's just that I'd have to change all of the SIGNs backwards and forwards. Okay, <coughs> so then now the odd terms are positive and the even terms are negative. So then it will be plus A2N minus one minus a 2n. <coughs> okay? So then now, this is equal to a1 minus a2 plus a3 minus a4 plus a5 minus a6 plus dot 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 all the way to a2n minus 1 minus a2n. So now, I've parenthesized these terms like this because I want you to see the following. So first off, the first property of the 
effects of the sequence I'm going to use is that A, the sequence AN, is decreasing. So A2 is less than A1. So how about the subtraction A1 minus A2? It must be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, how about A3 minus A4? Must be greater than or equal to 0. This must be greater than or equal to 0. All of them must be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so does everybody see that all of them must be greater than or equal to 0? <coughs> okay. <coughs> so, S2n plus 2 is equal to S2n plus a, what, 2n plus 1 minus a2n plus 2. Okay, now this, this next term, that's, greater, that's also greater than or equal to 0. So what's true about the even terms of the sequence of partial sums? Sorry? What's, what's true about this? I'm looking for a, for a phrase that begins with m. Monotone, right? So this means that S2n, no, let's not write it in black, let's write it in green, is monotone increasing. So S2n is monotone increasing. <coughs> okay, now I'd like to point out another thing. Now I'm going to take this same S2n and say, also, I can parenthesize it as follows. Okay, and to point out that this is, this is all greater than or equal to zero. So now I can take S2n and say that S2n is equal to A1 minus A2 minus A3. Okay, and then minus uh, A4 minus A5, and then minus <coughs> dot, 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 all the way down. Okay, <coughs> minus A2n. So then now, this, right, this term is greater than or equal to zero. This term is greater than or equal to zero, and this term is greater than or equal to zero. So then S2n, S2n, is the first term minus a bunch of things which are positive. It's minus a bunch of things which are positive, and S2n itself is positive. So S2n is bounded below by 0, bounded below by 0, and S2n is bounded above by A1. Right? The biggest it can ever be is A1. So it's bounded above by the first term, bounded below by 0. So what's true about the, the even part of the sequence of partial sums? It's bounded. Okay, so then <coughs> S2n is bounded below by 0, and S2n is bounded above by A1, the first term. Okay, so what's true about S2n then? Okay, so we now we have the two the we have the two important properties, right? We have this one and this one. So what's true about S2n? Yes? So somewhere my argument is broken. Let's look at this for just a minute. So A1, <coughs> S2n is bounded below by 0, S1. So what's happening here? The even terms, 
So S2n is this, and it's equal to this. So it is greater than 0, greater than 0, greater than 0, greater than 0. <coughs> so it's monotone increasing. Okay, so let's, ad let's address her point. So what's happening here? <coughs> so say your objection again, because it's a good objection. It's a good point, and I'm trying to figure out where, what's happening here. <laughs> what's happening here? It seems like double speak. Okay, so then. So then on the one hand, S2n is the sum of these positive terms. Okay, so it has to be monotone increasing. <coughs> and on the other hand, because of this consideration, because of this consideration, it still has to be bounded. Well, okay, so then it has to be bounded above by... Okay, now I see it. Just because it's just because it's monotone doesn't mean it can't be bounded. So what? So say your objection again. Is monotone increasing when it is bounded above by its first term? Ah, but that there's there's the rub. The rub is is that the first the first term of the even terms. Okay, so then so first let me write the conclusion here before I get this mixed up. So S two n is uh, S two n converges. Okay, so now to address. Okay, good. You had my heart was like beating quickly there for a minute. Okay, but na but now I, you know I'm like oh no the the universe is crumbling around me. <laughs> Okay, but no, the first term of S2n, right, the first term of S2n is S2, not S1, okay, because it, this is the, the even ones. So the, fir the first term is A1 minus A2. That's less than A1. It increases. It increases from this, okay, and is always less than A1. No. Okay, so let's write it like let's write let's write the first several terms. So S4 S4 will be a1 minus a2 and then plus a3 minus a4. Okay, and then S6 will be a1 minus a2 plus a3 minus a4 and then plus a5 minus a6. Okay, so then now, what I'm claiming to you is that because of the arguments we made previously, this one is less than or equal to a1, this one is less than or equal to a1, this one is less than or equal to a1, and all of them are less than or equal to a1. Okay, so this one's less than or equal to a1 because it's a1 minus something positive. Okay, and then similarly the argument continues. So it's a good point. You, you had me there, and I was kind of like, <laughs> oh, no. But no, I, I was able to pull it out of the fire at the last second. Okay, so then, the even terms. The, the even terms of the sequence of partial sums converges. Great. <coughs> okay. So then now, furthermore, Furthermore, we can say the following, <coughs> that S2n plus 1, so then now 2n is always positive, okay, so, uh, excuse me, 2n is always even, 
So then we dealt with the, with, the even, with the even part of the sequence of partial sums. So 2n is always even, so 2n plus 1 is always, is always odd. Okay, it's always odd. And furthermore, the sequence of partial sum, the odd terms of the sequence of partial t sums always have this format. It is S2n. Okay, and then now the odd terms are what? So I'm, the, I'm looking for the phrase positive or negative. The odd terms are, are positive, like A1 is positive, etc. So then <coughs> plus, so then this will be plus A2n plus 1. Okay, so then now we've made this strong statement about the even terms and we've and now we, we know the, the, how the odd terms are related to the even terms. So now we can compute a limit. <coughs> so the limit, OK, so then I need to come up here and say S, where I said S2n converges. So S2n converges. And let's say that the limit as n goes to infinity of S2n is equal to L, just so that it converges and we gave it a name. <coughs> so that I can use that name down here where I, where I was writing previously. The limit as n goes to infinity of the odd part, S2n plus 1. Well, that should be the limit as n goes to infinity of the even part plus this odd term. <coughs> Okay, so then that, because this converges, because the even parts converge, we just finished proving that the even parts converge, and we suppose in the conditions of the theorem that this thing converges, this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of S2n plus the limit as n goes to infinity of A2n plus 1. Okay, now this, the even part, we already gave a name to what it converges to. What does it converge to? converges to L, and then by, by the hypothesis of the theorem, we already said what, these, what this has to converge to. What does this have to converge to? Zero. Right? It has to converge to zero, because remember, we're demonstrating the alternating series test, which says that the sequence A, N, has to converge to zero and be monotone decreasing, and then the alternating series converges. So then, the even terms, We demonstrated that they must converge, and we called that L, called that L, and now we just demonstrated that the odd terms must also converge and must also converge to L. So the even, the even part of the sequence of partial sums converges to L. The odd part of the sequence part of the, of the sequence of partial sums converges to L. So the sequence of partial sums converges to L. No, that, no, the sequence, right? So that would, that's, that's like saying the, you know, if I give you a sequence and every other, you, you only consider the subsequence of every other term and that, that converges to L. And then the other part, right, that converges to L. So the sequence just converges to L. <coughs> okay, so the alternating series test. Wasn't that enjoyable? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> So for <laughs> so for anyone that's considering being a math major, right? This is like bread and butter, right? This is what is done in math classes and analysis. So if you like if you like this thing, this kind of argument, then you'll do this a lot in math. If you find yourself disgusted by this, then you should avoid <laughs> math. You know, maybe this you'll top out at calculus, and that's fine. So any question about this before we go on to to doing examples? <coughs> okay, so let's do an example. How are we doing on time? <coughs> Plenty of time. Okay, that looks boring. That looks boring. 
These are all really boring. <coughs> OK. Sorry? Well, there's, there's problems with making up questions on the fly. OK, so then the sum from n is 1 to infinity of, yeah, we'll do that. <coughs> Negative 1 to the n divided by uh, the log of n plus 1. OK. So then now, imagine that you're somewhere off in the, in the future. Right, you get prompted with this. Now you have the following, you have the following uh, idea. OK. Is it a geometric series? No. Okay, can I use the nth term test for a divergence? No, because, because n plus 1 goes to infinity. Log of an argument which goes to infinity goes to infinity. So the denominator is going to infinity. So the sequence part of this series is going to 0. So the nth term test for divergence tells you nothing. Okay, so then next, can you integrate this? And the answer is... No, right? What would you even do with the negative 1 to the n? That would become negative 1 to the x, which is not a function in, in the sense of this class. OK, so then you can't even use that. can't even write the function, right? So therefore, you can't use the integral test. How about the direct comparison test? OK, the answer is no. The direct comparison test is right out, because the direct comparison test, as one of its first requirement is that we have to be talking about positive sequences. Is this always positive? No. Okay, how about the limit comparison test? Out, for the exact same reason. Okay, need positive sequences. Okay, and then finally, right, what you, sh what you really would see at the very, very beginning is you look at negative 1 to, to the n and say, oh, well, that's alternating. So probably I should use what? Alternating. The alternating series test. Okay. Does everybody sort of see the, the line of reasoning? So you should announce to the grader, I'm using the alternating series test. And I'm going to use a n is equal to, <coughs> a n is equal to uh, 1 over the log of n plus 1. OK, <coughs> so then now, is this positive? Is a n a positive uh, sequence? Is it positive? So the real question is, when is log positive? Greater than 1, right? Log is positive. So this is positive because log of x is positive when x is greater than 1. OK, so then we, we legitimately can use the alternating series test. So then there are two requirements. <coughs> okay, so then here's the first requirement. Is it true that the limit as n goes to infinity is 0? So let's compute that. So what do you say? Is it 0? I would say yes, it's obviously 0. <coughs> okay, what is the other requirement? Sorry? It must be monotone decreasing. Okay, so is a n monotone decreasing? Okay, so then now, how do you show that something is monotone decreasing? There's two major ways, right? You can either use a sequence of inequalities, okay, or you can do what? Use calculus by doing what? Compute a derivative, show that the, der the SIGN of the derivative is negative for all values, and there therefore it's like that. So I'm going to do both of them just so that you see them both. Okay, so as a sequence of inequalities, you could say, well, 0 is less than 1. That's a fact. n is less than n plus 1. That's a fact. Now I can compute. Uh, in fact, I want to say it like this. I want to change this. Not 0 is less than 1, but 1 is less than 2, right? which is not, not really m much more of an argument there. Okay, so then now, this is a fact. Okay, so now log, you can compute the log of both sides. 
log of n plus 1 is less than the log of n plus 2. And why can you compute the log of both sides? Because of what property of log that was proven in 2417? Because log is increasing. What? Uh, yeah, this should be n plus 2. Somehow that, like that. <coughs> Okay, so you can compute log of both sides of the inequality and, and the inequality, the direction of the inequality is preserved because log itself is increasing. So now you can take reciprocals of both sides and obtain that 1 over the log of n plus 1 is greater than 1 over the log of n plus 2. Okay, <coughs> so then this term, this is a, a n, and this term is a n plus 1. Okay, therefore, a n is monotone decreasing. In fact, it's even better, right? It's strictly monotone decreasing, but all we need is monotone decreasing. Okay, now, if you didn't, if you don't like this inequality business, then let's do it in the calculus way. <coughs> okay, so, or, with calculus. Take the function f of x is 1 over the log of x plus 1, okay, which I will write as the log of x plus 1 uh, to the negative 1. <coughs> its derivative is negative log of x plus 1 to the negative 2 multiplied by the derivative of log of x plus 1, which is 1 over x plus 1. <coughs> okay, so then after algebraic uh, playing around, this will be equal to, the derivative will be, let's look at this for a second, negative 1 over this log term squared multiplied by x plus 1. Okay. Now, what is the domain of the function that of this function f of x? What are the only x's we're interested in? Greater than or equal to 1 because we're comparing this function to a sequence. Okay. Now, is there anywhere is there anywhere that this function where this derivative is undefined in its domain? No, there isn't anywhere, because its domain is x is greater than or equal to 2. So log has no problems there, and it has no zeros there either. How about x plus 1? When is the only time that x plus 1 could be 0? At negative 1, which is also not in the domain. So there are no critical numbers whatsoever for this, for this uh, function. Right? None. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Now you just plot. <coughs> now you plot the whole line, <laughs> and you choose any point in the line, right? That's to the right of x is one. So what's something to the right of x is one? How about two? Sorry. Okay. Now we evaluate <coughs> the derivative at 2, or any point to the right of 1, and then you get what? Negative over the log of 3 squared multiplied by uh, 3. Okay, so the log of 3 squared is positive, 3 is positive. Okay, so then you have negative 1 divided by something positive, so this is negative. So, it's decreasing. <coughs> Okay, so either with calculus or with inequalities, you determine that it's decreasing. So then now, even after all of this, we have not answered the question because a conclusion has not been made. So now, what is the conclusion? What is it? The conclusion is that the alternating series, okay, uh, what was it? negative 1 to the n over log of n plus 1 
Does it converge or does it diverge? Converges. Okay, it's, it is critical for you to write a conclusion because if you don't write a conclusion, okay, even after all of the correct work you write down, the grader can only assume that after all of that work, even though it's correct, you were not able to arrive at the conclusion. Okay, so please don't do that. Okay, so any question about the alternating series test? Okay, so then there are two major clues about when you should use the alternating series test. The first major clue is if I say, use the alternating series test, right? If I say that, then that's a significant clue. The, if I don't say that, <coughs> if I don't say that, then if you see this alternating term, then probably going to use the alternating series test. Yes? No. And... I don't know what it converges to either. <laughs> right. But but I know that it converges. Can we assume that it yes, yes. If it doesn't converge, then it then it diverges. Uh, well, so then now, but you need to be careful. If it doesn't satisfy the requirements of the alternating series test, that doesn't mean it diverges. That means that you cannot conclude it converges. Right. So there's a difference. Right. So. So failure of the alternating series test, that, is not a, that, is not, that does not say that it diverges. It says, it says that you cannot conclude it converges, which is a different. <coughs> it may still converge. OK. So now we have a, a new adjective <coughs> that we need to add to our jargon here. And it is this. Okay, so then, this is called absolute convergence. Okay, so given <coughs> AN, now AN can have positive and negative terms. It doesn't have to be positive. It could be positive or negative. So there are several pieces of lingo we have to say here. If the sum from n is 1 to infinity of the absolute value of an converges, Okay, that is to say that we have some sequence. Now, remind me, I'd like to ask this question again. Remind me, what is a sequence? A, li a list of infinitely many numbers. It's a list of numbers that has infinitely many elements in the list. And what is a series? Yeah. That's right. It represents, it represents the attempt to add up a sequence. Right? Can you always add up a sequence? Yeah. No, that's what we've been talking about here for the last several lectures. You can't always do it, but sometimes you can. Okay, so then now, what this is saying, what this condition is saying is that if you are given a sequence, it might, it might be all positive, it might be all negative, it could be a mixture of positive and negative terms. So if you take that sequence, and then for every term in that sequence, you take the absolute value, okay, so that you've switched all of the terms to be positive, and then you try and add them all up, and if that converges, then <coughs> the sum from n is 1 to infinity of a n, okay, that is to say that now you're just trying to add up the series that you were originally given add up the sequence you were originally, can given, originally given, then <coughs> this converges also, and it is said to converge absolutely. Okay, <coughs> two. If the series 
of A in converges <coughs> and the series of the absolute value of A in diverges. So then that is to say that, okay, I give you some sequence. It might have some positive terms. It might have some negative terms. You sum it up, and it converges. Then you say, okay, now what if I change all of the signs to positive, and I try and sum that up? And you say, ah, but that diverges. Okay, then this series is converges, but now more specifically it's said to converge conditionally. Then... <coughs> the sum <coughs> from n is 1 to infinity of a n converges <coughs> conditionally conditionally okay so for those of you that are going to go on in math you're going to get into this kind of thing where you have all kinds of modes of convergence Right? Weak convergence, strong convergence. Weak star convergence, operator convergence. Blah, 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 blah. All kinds of stuff. Right? So then here, this is, the most, this is the most precise we'll get in this class. Right? We'll say that something can converge, a series can converge absolutely or conditionally. Okay, <coughs> so then before I actually show, right, because this, this right here, needs proof, and we're going to show it. This second thing, that's just a comment. That's just the kind of language we're going to use. Okay, so it doesn't require any proof. I'm just saying that's what we say. Okay, now let's try and see something that converges <coughs> absolutely and something that converges conditionally. Okay, so for example, the sum from n is 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n squared. Okay, so this is an alternating series. So this is an alternating series with a n <coughs> is 1 over n squared. And the alternating part is negative 1 to the n. <coughs> OK. So then, uh, the sum from n is 1 to infinity of the absolute value of negative 1 to the n over n squared. Right, so now I'm going to compute the absolute value of each one of these. Okay, so then now this, this will be the sum from n is 1 to infinity of. Now, in the denominator, what is the absolute value of the denominator? n squared, for a variety of reasons. One is that n is positive. Two is that I'm squaring it. Right, at any rate, positive. Now, what is the absolute value of negative 1 to the n? 1. Right, because negative 1 to the n is either 1 or negative 1. In either case, the absolute value is 1. So how about this series that I have written now? What kind of series is it? A p series with p is 2, and therefore it converges. Right, converges. So therefore, this the sum from n is 1 of negative 1 to the n over n squared, it more than converges, right? It more than converges. It converges absolutely. Okay, another example. The sum from n is 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n, right? Looks just like the previous example almost. Except this one is quite famous, so famous that it has a name. What's its name? <coughs> yes, the alternating harmonic series. Okay, series. Okay, so then now, these are just facts that I'm going to write down. Okay. Using the alternating series test, the alternating harmonic series converges. 
Okay, so then if, if you were to go through the, the exercise of using the alternating series test, you would determine that the alternating harmonic series converges. And <coughs> the series from n is 1 to infinity of the absolute value of negative 1 to the n over n, taking absolute values now, this is the series from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n. And this series is also so famous that it has a name. This is the harmonic series. And the harmonic series, what? It diverges. Okay, so then the conclusion here is that the alternating harmonic series, it converges, but not absolutely. So it is said to converge conditionally. Wonderful. Okay, so any question about these things? Okay, so then maybe I'll skip showing you that, that if this converges, then this converges. But I do want to say one thing. Okay, so then now, <coughs> whenever I give you an alternating series te uh, test question, okay, it's always going to ask, it's always going to ask that sort of thing. It's going to say, here's a series. I want you to, to, to determine if this series converges absolutely, or if it converges conditionally, or if it diverges. Okay? So then, <coughs> such an example, and I'll make sure it's short because I know that we all want to go. Okay, so then, I'm not actually going to solve it. I'm just going to show you one. Okay, so I'll just make it easy. Okay, so the sum from n is 1 to infinity, I'll just write the same one that I wrote on the previous page, n squared. So I want you to, de to determine if it converges absolutely, converges conditionally, or diverges. Okay, so then... <coughs> You should always test absolute convergence first, okay? because it only has one requirement. You compute absolute values and test if it converges. Okay? And you, will always need to, you always need to see if it converges absolutely. The only time you need to check if it converges conditionally is if it does not converge absolutely. So always test absolute convergence first, okay? because if it, if it converges <laughs> absolutely, there is no need to do any further testing. So, for example, if it converges absolutely, that means it is not necessary to invoke the alternating series test. You do not even need to consider it. Okay, so then that, that makes the problem very short. Okay, the only time that you need to check if it converges conditionally is if it doesn't converge absolutely. Okay, so for example, on this one, you would be able to say that, okay, you'll be able to show it converges, converges absolutely, and no alternating series test is necessary. Okay, on the other hand, if you were to do this example, the sum from n, n is 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over log of n plus 1, one of the previous ones we did, okay, you would show it doesn't converge absolutely. It does not converge absolutely. Okay, and you would be able to do that with like the integral test or something like that. Maybe not this one. This one would be too difficult. But I would give you one where you could where you could show it. Show it. It doesn't converge absolutely. Okay, it doesn't converge absolutely. And then you will be able to show with the alternating series test that it converges. So since you showed it doesn't converge absolutely, but with the alternating series test it converges, what's the conclusion? It converges conditionally. Okay, and the last thing I want to say before we say have a good weekend is this. <coughs> a series can converge absolutely, or it can converge conditionally, or it can diverge. There is no such thing as diverging absolutely. There is no such thing as diverging conditionally. It is 
converges absolutely, converges conditionally, or diverges. <laughs> See you next week. <coughs> yes? Yes. Ah, but this isn't the alternating harmonic series. <coughs> Okay.